Come on, Miss Bledsoe. No, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, Ms. Bledsoe, you're charged with assault, bodily injury. You're facing up to a year in jail and a $4,000 fine. We're going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you, ma'am. Yes, Judge. Okay. On September 12, 2024, officers responded to an assault at a residence in Harris County, Texas. The complainant reported that the defendant, her ex-boyfriend's baby mother, assaulted her, punching her on the nose, grabbing her hair, and busted her lip. The complainant stated that while she was walking to her car to take her kids to school, and when she was getting close to her car, the defendant came out from behind the dumpster, approached the complainant, and told the complainant, remember, I told you we were going to eventually meet. The defendant then punched the complainant on her nose and then grabbed her by her hair and kept hitting her. The complainant was able to get her mace and mace the defendant. The defendant let the complainant go and left the scene. The complainant stated she did not say anything to provoke the attack. And the complainant stated there is a history of previous violent incidents between her and the defendant, where the defendant has come to her apartment and tried to fight her. And the officers observed some minor injuries on the complainant's face, specifically a swollen nose, a busted lower lip, and a small scratch on her right cheek. She has a prior in, uh, injury to a child. She has a prior assault family member. Any of these relate to that person? Let me see, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Ms. Bledsoe, I'm going to find that there's probable cause to go forward with the case. I'm ordering you as a condition of your bond not to have any contact with this complaining witness. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I find that you do, or if I find that you're in possession of weapons, I will revoke your bond, put you in jail. You will not get any more PR bonds. What do you do for a living, man? I work. Doing what? I work at um, MKG. I'm sorry? MKG, delivering parts. Okay. It's a full-time gig? Yeah. How much money do you make a month? Um, little or nothing. Sorry? A little on the nothing. Okay. What's little to you is not little to me. What's so? Eight dollars an hour. Do you have any children? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? I have six. Six kids. Do you get support for any of those children? I don't get any child support. Okay. Did you want to apply for an appointed lawyer, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay, I am ordering you as a condition of your bond not to consume alcohol or illegal drugs, and I'm going to randomly test you. If I find that you're using any illegal dope, you're using alcohol, likewise, I will put you in jail. Do you have custody of any of those so. children? That's, I don't use drugs, so that's fine. Or alcohol? That's all alcohol. Okay. That's fine. Do you have custody of all those kids? Yes. Okay. Consider that if you go to jail, who's going to take care of those six kids? I know I can't say much because it be used against I'm just me. Yeah. asking you that when you're out there in the free world, think because you have a, bu a bunch of mouths to feed. If you're in custody, who's going to feed them? I'm, I would just want to say she's lying on me. She's been harassing me, but we'll wait uh, till the, you know, when right. I can't so speak. So we'll give you an application. I'm going to have you go to Victoria, fill out a reset. After that, I'll have you meet with pre trial and then we'll find your lawyer. Okay. okay. Cameron Newell. Yes, sir. Mr. Newell, you're charged with driving while intoxicated. Second offense, you're facing up to a year in jail and or a $4,000 fine. We're going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you, sir. Yes, Judge. On October 21st, 2024, officer was dispatched as backup regarding a possible DWI where the defendant's vehicle hit the concrete wall at the 100 block of East Sam Houston Tollway after the defendant failed to maintain a single lane. The officer observed the defendant with slurred speech and slow responses and often asked the same question multiple times. The standard field sobriety tests were conducted, HGN 6 out of 6, walk and turn 7 out of 8, one leg stand 1 out of 4. The defendant was unable to complete the one leg stand because he had screws in his left ankle. The DIC was red and the defendant consented to a, a blood draw. Okay. 
So the PC is the accident, right? The accident, you're on. Are you on parole? Yes, sir. Are you on probation at this time? Yes, sir. Here's a prior manslaughter case where we had a death in a car. Was there alcohol or any kind of dope as an allegation of that one as well? Let me check your honor. I had a seizure, your honor. Do you have a Texas driver license, Mr. Newell? Sir. If you want to drive, I'm warning you not to drive in the middle of the night. I'm now putting a curfew on you and giving you a restriction. I don't want you out in the middle of the night and I'm ordering you not to consume alcohol or illegal drugs. I'm, put, I'm putting an ankle monitor on you so I know that you're not consuming alcohol. You better darn well know about every single thing that you put in your body. Mr. Newell, I'm going to do everything in my power to protect the public. You already have one fatality in a car under your belt. I'm not going to put up with it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. No alcohol, drugs. You are, you are not, to cons or not to drive any vehicle that doesn't have a guardian interlock on it. I am sending now notice to the Texas Department of Public Safety so that they know any car that you drive must be equipped with an ignition interlock. And if it doesn't, they're going to put you in jail. And I'm going to tell you now, you violate any of these conditions, I'm going to lock you up and I'm going to deem you a public danger and make your bond very high. Do you understand? Sorry. No alcohol, no illegal drugs, and I'm going to test you like crazy to make sure that you're not using it. What do you do for a living? I'm a land surveyor. How much money do you make a month? Two to four thousand. They set your case to give you time to hire a lawyer. Like I said, I'm giving you a curfew so that you're not out in the middle of the night. Do you understand? If you violate this, then likewise, if you go to jail, that's it. Sir. Sir, I'll be honest with you. I was. Don't. Don't. Okay. There's nothing that you can say to justify anything at this point. All of my. You gotta understand, Mr. Newell, my primary concern is public safety. That's the only thing that matters to me. Every day, someone in Harris County dies from an alcohol-related collision. It's, it's a sick and sobering statistic that I will do everything in my power to prevent. Do you understand? Sorry, and if that means putting everyone in custody, I'm gonna do it to protect my county. That's the only thing that matters to me. I'm going to have you go to Victoria sign a reset. After that, I'll get you with pre-trial for your bond conditions. And after that, we'll have you take a seat while we get all the paperwork ready. You must charge these batteries on a constant and daily basis. If the battery goes dead, they will file an, you know, a bond violation report. And then in, you know what's going to happen. You're on notice now. Sure. Okay. Come on. He tested positive for meth. So depressed, right? I'm homeless. I couldn't. I, I, I'm. I've been so clean for so long, Your Honor. I, I, homeless, not working yet. You can use meth, right? I was so depressed, and, and I'm so paranoid about sleeping on the streets. I've been clean for so long, Your Honor. It, you don't know how long I've been clean. Uh-huh. And, and it's just and my state of mind. I, just, I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did it. Well, I have no choice, Mr. Cabrera, but to do one thing now. You know what that is, right? I'm saving my life. Good. That's what we want to do. We want to get you off any and all dope for all time. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that happens. He goes with you. All right. Mm, no, I don't even. Well, what's the bond at now? 
I don't think it's, I think it's kind of academic because I don't think people make money. Too. So I think what we should do is do a T, set them up for a TRAS, see how we go forward. Um, they may say residential is the way to go. I, I don't know. Um, but at least we can get a headway of how to move forward. What's the best way? Because we don't know how deep the addiction is, right? So, and I mean, he's saying it's going to save a life. So, uh, do you mind? <clears throat> how are you? I'm you are confused. Jamal Brown? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Jamal Brown, you are wanted out of. Jefferson Parish Enthusiast. Yeah. For? Theft 13,000. Another theft case. One, two, three, four, five, now six. Doesn't get better. I already signed. I got it. So what I see, you signed for 10 months state jail. Okay. I see that you signed with 97 days credit. I see that you... It's been waiting for at least 35 days in jail. That probably around, it gives you around 130 to 132 days credit from what I see. Even if I give you a bond right now, a PR bond, you're not going anywhere because you have a sentence to serve. So even if I give you a bond, you're just going to sit there until they take you to state jail. So there's nothing, you're, and what I was telling Abel here is that you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because you've got time that you got to serve. So there's nothing that I can really do to force them to take you to state jail. I don't know why. I mean, is it book at the gills or what? Sometimes it's, they'll have them sit in the county jail until their time is almost up. And then it starts a process to release them. I will say that county time is a lot easier than state jail time. Yeah, I don't, so I, that's kind of a blessing in disguise. You know? I, I don't want to do county time. I'd rather go to state jail. If you could, it's up to them when TDC really? decides to pull. I know you give me a PR bond, that'd be fine. And I'll, I'll go from there. I don't want to do county something. That's not going to happen, man. Okay, so, so why did you tell me <laughs> You got 10 months. You said even if you gave you one. I know, but I'm not, trying. I'm not trying to leave. I'm trying to leave county so I can go to state jail because I have other things I want to take care of. I want to get my, want, want, get my 20%. I don't want to stay in county time. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So if you could give me a PR bond so I can wind up doing my state jail time and I go and take care of my Louisiana time. Me giving you a PR bond doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get you to state jail any faster. Okay, but if you could, that's what I'd like to be granted. Okay. Is there any way to expedite him to get to state jail? What did they say? Uh, well, I haven't talked to Dave extensively about this yet. We just knew that we had to approach with uh, council today. Um, as far as I know, whenever I've tried to reach out to state jail or like TC about when they're going to pick out, they usually don't give me like a specific day that they're going to do it. I could I could reach out, but I can't guarantee that they're actually going to say they'll pick up in time. And it's kind of early still. You want to talk, reach out today to see what he has to say about this? Yeah. yeah. And then um, if he can, try to put in a call to state jail to see what's going on. You know, the 20%, it, doesn't that come from a judge anyways? No, it comes from the drug program. Harris County gives it 20%. I was on it last year. It gives it twenty percent when I go down there, but I have to go down there in order to, to receive my twenty percent. I, I don't want to necessarily do ten months in county because I didn't sign for ten months in county. I signed for ten months state jail, and I would like to go down to state jail so I can be able to, you know, go to the law library, write Louisiana, start taking care of business down there because they don't pop, they don't have the proper materials down here in Harris County. Can you also reach out today? and ask him because he's doing 10 months state jail, is Louisiana still interested in him? Do they still want him? Okay, yeah. You know, um, a lot of times when someone gets sentenced to prison or state jail time, they'll, the demanding jurisdiction, meaning here, Louisiana will release the hold. But because here it's only state jail time, not that much granted. And you probably, and you're like, you're saying you're getting you know, 20%. They may want to keep the hold so that when you do get your time done in state jail, at that point, they'll ship you off to Louisiana to deal with that. That's, you know? that's what I like to have. Yeah. Um, so give me a little bit of time. I'm going to reach out to um, another prosecutor to see what we can do about trying to get you more information. I can't guarantee anything, but we'll try. You know, yeah, please. Well, worst they can say is is take a hike, you know, but we'll try for you. Yeah, so so I have a question. So they was gonna keep me here to hold for 10 months. Sorry? They was gonna try to keep me here for 10 months and keep resetting. No, 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 no. Um they'll we'll get you to state jail, but the problem is is that they're probably not gonna release the Louisiana hold 
That's fine. That's fine. I, I would like to go to stage. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do no time and count. Let's try to get you there. We'll try to get you there. Okay. But wait, I have a question. So it was going to continue keeping me here because last time I came here and I never was, I never seen it. No, like I said, my experience is when someone gets st sent to state jail or prison, they release the hold. And That's my experience. Our fugitive case isn't actually keeping him here. It's just we are waiting on state jail to come and get him. Okay. But look, we're going to try to reach into it for you and then I'll bring you out in a little bit and, and tell you what we find. Okay? For sure. And he's here with the bondsman yard. You want to bring him up, please? Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to make it a cost. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that. 253 5183. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Casares, you're charged with, I think I remember this case, you're charged with indecent assault. You're facing up to a year in jail and or a $4,000 fine. We are going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney present if you cannot afford one. One will be appointed to you. Is this the one where there's a maid? Uh, yes, Sean. <laughs> The complainant was employed as a housekeeper in the defendant's home. The complainant was cleaning up the house when the defendant approached the complainant and told the complainant to touch it. The complainant refused to touch the defendant and, grabbed, and the defendant grabbed the complainant's right hand and placed it on the defendant's genitals over his clothes. The defendant eventually left and told the complainant not to tell anyone about the situation. The defendant later approached the complainant as she was cleaning the bathroom and the defendant entered the bathroom and locked the door. The defendant then grabbed the complainant's right breast, removed her face mask, and began kissing the complainant. The complainant believed if she kept ignoring the defendant, he would stop. The defendant did eventually stop and left the bathroom. The officer observed text messages between the defendant and the complainant, where the complainant, complainant stated she wanted nothing to do with the defendant, and her decision was firm. Okay. Mr. Gassettis, I'm going to find that there's probable cause to go forward with your case. I'm ordering you as a condition of your bond not to have any contact with the complaining witness in this case. You understand? Yes, sir. I'm issuing what's called a magistrate's order for emergency protection that identifies her as a protected individual. You cannot commit family violence or an assault against this person. Commit an act in furtherance of an offense under section 42.072 of the Texas Penal Code, which is the stalking statute. You cannot threaten, harass, use another person to communicate a threat or harassing behavior. You cannot be in possession of a weapon or go within 200 feet of where she lives or where she works. If you violate this court order, the state can and will file a, you know, additional case against you, violation of a protective order, and things will go sideways quick. You have a lawyer. He will take care of you because you have a lawyer. I will waive your appearance, but it is your responsibility to stay in touch with Mr. Olson, and he will tell you if and when you have to come back to court. If he tells me he can't get a hold of you because you're playing games, I will issue a warrant for arrest. So if you pick up a new case, violate conditions, no more PR bonds. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you guys, let's talk about bond. There's no bond set at this time. Um, you guys have a recommendation. 5,000. Uh, judge, I would ask for 2,500. He, he has no contact with the complainant. Any criminal history that you guys see? Yes, judge. He was on a two year probation out of Bear County and for a DWI, but this was in 1990. And then he had another charge for a possession of marijuana in 1992 out of Bear County and the disposition on that is unknown. But those are his only two other charges. Those are the only things you see? Or run it NCIC, Your Honor, just, just please. Assuming that's it, um, Mr. Casares, I'll tell you now that I will do everything in my power to protect the city at all costs, you know? I think that, and I firmly believe that everybody deserves at least one chance. I will give you a PR bond now, but I'm not going to give you another one. If you pick up a new case, you become a danger to our city. I only have one place for you, and that's lockup. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'll set the bond at $2,500. I'll give you a PR bond, and then you go from there. He needs to sign um, the MOAP. Also, we'll put other conditions for him, no contact and no weapons, and that's it for now. Okay. okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, guys. Thank you, Mr. Olson. All right, sir. Do not leave until we get you to sign all the paperwork. Okay. okay. But he has one positive for the benzo. It's it's not before or after. He only has nine for per needed. So it's not like he's getting. It's a bunch not of good to substitute one addiction for another addiction. That's not. That's. Not, you're only hurting yourself in the long run. 
at some point you're going to have to deal with this because what you're literally doing is, is you're slowly killing yourself physically and mentally. And it's not a good way to go through life. At some point, you're going to have to deal with this. And it's better sooner than later because the more time you take, the more difficult things become. You know what I mean? Uh, we're not here to hurt you. We want to help you and we want to see you in the best light that you can be. And you end up in, in just... I don't want you to be addicted from one thing to the other. I want you to be able to deal with it and deal with it in a healthy way so that you're not always having to deal with some kind of substance or some kind of chemical. Because truth be told, Mr. Jones, it's mind over matter, you know? And I know it's easier said than done, but you can. When you put your heart and soul, you can get anything done. So um, have you been prescribed or have you been found that you have a seizure, that you have? Just I really don't think this is appropriate to be talked about in a public forum. This is HIPAA protected health information. I'm, I have to object, sorry. And, well, then you're going to have to provide me with records that that so if you, want, if you want to have a conference in, in chambers or without audio, I'm fine with that. But I'm not trying to put more of his medical history out there for the internet and YouTube to be seen. I don't think it's appropriate. Okay. You can still live stream it, just mute it, just like if you're in trial and the jury shouldn't hear it. I need to know that if he's taking benzos, it's not something that's illegal. Okay. It's actually prescribed and it's for a medically necessary purpose. And we can provide that not in front of the world. Okay, so I guess set it for later this week and I wanna see that he has the medically, med you know, the purpose. I will submit it to you under seal so you can review it. Okay. It's not, but I'm not gonna do a public filing and I, I'm gonna okay object that to it. I'm okay with that. I have no okay. issue with that, but if it continues to test for benzos. And he probably should test today for benzos. It's going to be, he's not taking it seriously. He's not taking it as a thing. And he doesn't have prescription, which I provided to you. But I don't want to discuss. That's... Well, Walgreens wouldn't lie, Judge. I get it, but you have nine and you it's been since. They're needed. You don't take all nine unless you need one at a time. That's why they give you nine. They don't give you 60. <laughs> if you're doing it daily, they give you 60. If you're doing per needed, they give you nine. So let's do this. Then if he is, uh, um, he only has a limited number, right? right? So if he's tested positive already three times for that's benzos, not, that's not accurate. Oh. then that's three, three pills. pills. Twice. Twice. Okay, twice. Okay. But you tested him three times in three weeks. So okay. we're going to continue to do it because I want to make sure that you're not using it. You understand? Okay. All right. There you go. Thank you. We'll submit. Let's make sure I'm clear on what we're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep testing you like crazy. I want you to know that. Yes, sir. So we just set it up for weekly testing, Judge. As part That's of what we're doing. Yes. We're not going to record every single week. Because it's kind of, I mean, personally, it's a little bit harder on my doctor. You too. don't have to. You don't okay. have to show. He's got to come and test every Monday and Thursday. You don't have to show. He does. Does that include like showing the court or just reporting on said? Just send a letter. Just make sure where you want just, to go. But you got to come here to get the order and then we send you there. Okay. So you come here, get the order, we send you there, and then you go, and then we'll deal with it when the time comes. And also I'm getting I, I need proof also that he's all medical conditions. Because okay. I want to know that it's medically necessary, that you're not taking it just for S and giggles. That's not I understand. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. Right, so we're doing Monday, Thursday testing. Yeah. Yeah. So but you though, Dustin, we'll give you a date like a couple weeks out. You don't have to 